In this video, we're going to focus on something that I've glossed over multiple times. What we're going to show with this project is how to securely access private virtual machines in Azure using Azure Bastion. Now, if you've watched some of our other Azure videos on this channel, you will see that I most always deploy Bastion because it's so uh, makes debugging your VM so easy without having to have a public IP address. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to just focus on how Bastion works, the minimal setup that you need to get Bastion to work. And so what we're going to do is in this project, which is designed to be something you can take and adapt to your own, we're going to build the following elements. We're going to build a Azure virtual machines with the appropriate subnetting, Windows VM, a private Linux VM. On both of those VMs, we're going to deploy an admin user and we're going to store the credentials for the admin user in an Azure Key Vault. So we'll go into Key Vault to retrieve our credentials when we test. And then finally, we're going to do an Azure Bastion host. And so what exactly is the point here? Well, it means that you can have these VMs that are private and interact with them within the Azure console. And that way it kind of limits your exposure. You only have this one entry point into your, your environment. You secure that. And then from there, you can access your private resources. Let's take a brief look at the architecture diagram of what we're going to build here. We've got our, uh, we're in US Central Region. We have the main network, the Bastion Virtual Net, VNet. And in that, we're going to have two subnets. The first one is the Bastion subnet. And we'll talk about that a little bit when we talk about the Bastion, but it has to have this very specific name, very specific ports that are opened up, and you just have to have its own uh, subnet. You want to have nothing else in the subnet other than the Bastion hosts. Then we have the VM subnet, and that's where we're going to spin up the Linux VM and the Windows VM. We're going to provision both of them with local admin credentials. We're going to put those credentials into the key vault. And at that point, what we can do is go into the Azure portal, uh, use the, the Bastion public IP address through the portal. And what we'll do is we'll get a dialogue that says, okay, which VM you want to connect to. You connect to it, you give it the credentials, and it'll open it up in its own window within the browser, which is a secure connection into the VM, either using RDP or SSH. Okay, before we get started with the build, let's talk about the basics of understanding an Azure Bastion deployment. So what we need is we first have to create a virtual network for the Bastion hosts. And so uh, we need to make sure we have big enough CIDR blocks, but the virtual, the Azure Bastion host goes into your virtual network. Then we have to require the subnet specifically for Bastion. And in that subnet, it actually has to be named Azure Bastion subnet. It will not work unless you use that name. So you don't put anything else in this subnet other than just the Azure resources. Uh, that will break things. Sometimes it won't even let you do it. But this subnet is strictly for hosting the Azure Bastion subnet. The last point is the CIDR block for the Azure Bastion subnet needs to have at least 64 IP addresses. Uh, I thought it was 32, but apparently I changed it a couple of years ago. It's 64 IP addresses. So I believe this is slash 26. And then after you have the Bastion subnet deployed, you're going to need to provision the Bastion host. And the Bastion host gets a public IP address. It's the only public IP address you, you need for accessing things from the Azure portal. Again, it's deployed in the Azure Bastion subnet. And once we do this, your VMs do not need public IPs to actually interact with the Bastion host. And finally, we have network security group considerations. By default, it will just work, but it opens up more ports than you need. So what you want to do is you know, follow the principles of least privilege. Just open the, the ports needed for Azure Bastion subnet to work. And we've done that in the project, and we've documented them. OK, let's talk about prerequisites. So the prerequisites on this project are fairly simple. Azure account. Uh, it needs to be pay-as-you-go, not the free tier. And then you need to have the AZ CLI for the uh, scripts that I've written to work. And you need the latest Terraform as well. If this is your first time watching our content, we recommend you starting with the, the video Azure and Terraform Easy Setup. It provides a step by guide to actually create the build identity necessary in the Azure console and then to configure Terraform and the AZ CLI to use those credentials. 
Okay, now let's build the code. So what you need to do is go into the documentation and copy the code or the bash commands to download the code. So copy that, go into your development environment, hit paste. Okay, the first thing we need to do, uh, we've got the code down, is we want to need check, check ENV. And it's going to go through and validate that you have all the requirements and the prerequisites met. Um, so that's it for the prerequisites. So what we want to do now is we're going to build. Now the build for this project takes between 10 and 15 minutes to run. Okay, the build has completed. And now let's go to the console and take a look as to what got built. So let me minimize this. Here's the console. You want to go to resource groups first. And the resource group that this code builds is Bastion RG. Click on that. I guess let's we'll start with the networking. So let's go to the Bastion virtual network. And you will see it's a slash 23. And if you go look at the subnets, these subnets, there's two of them, one for our VMs, and then the special name Azure subnet, Azure Bastion subnet. It has 121, that's more than 64 IP addresses. And then we have a network security group just for the Bastion um, subnet. Then under the Bastion tab, it shows you uh, how you can invoke. You can pick which win Windows VM or the Linux VM. Now we'll probably connect in the demo from the VM, so it's just a different way of accessing it. So let's go back to the resource group. And let's, uh, uh, okay, then we have the credentials vault. This is gonna have the admin credentials for the VM. So I'm gonna click on that. I think I used this admin as the name and I used the exact same username and password for both VMs. So that is the credentials. This changes, so even though you can see this on the screen right now, this is going to be different every time the application builds. Then let's go back to the resource group, and let's look at a couple other things. Let's look at the search on that, and we've got two VMs. So let's look at the Linux VM. Linux VM, which you will notice, is there is no public IP address. It's just a private IP address. Same thing with the Windows VM. You will see no uh, public IP address, just a private IP address. Let's go back. Then we also have um, a NAT gateway. Um, and the NAT gateway, the instances that we boot up, they need to have internet connectivity. They have to have outbound internet connectivity. And the way you do outbound internet connectivity is through a NAT gateway. So let's go back to the resource group. We've got the Bastion host, and it tells you the public IP address. Um, however, you don't really need any of this. So that's it for Bastion host. So for the demo, what we're going to do is click on the window. Well, first off, let's go to the credentials and open a new tab, get the secret uh, values so you can see them and use them. So I am going to go and I'm going to log in to the sysadmin using that rather long password. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to click on the Linux VM and I'm going to say connect via Bastion. And I'm going to put a uh, sysadmin as the user ID and then the password of the instance I just. Um, Oh, we've got to pull it out of Credential Manager, and I'm going to click Connect. Allow. And you can see now we are logged in. So I, uh, I'm logged in. I can do a curl, HTTP, Google.com, and you can see it's a bunch of junk, but that shows me that I'm connected to the Internet, So, but I do not have an IP address. So if I do a host name, I'm just going to get 10, 10, 0, 4. So that is it for the Linux VM. So let's uh, hit exit. Now I'm also uh, an admin here, so I can go and 
configure software this route. I think mostly you're going to do that provisioning automatically. But if you need to get in onto your boxes as a sysadmin, the, uh, the bash should allow you to get in there and do some simple pseudo debugging type of issues. So I am going to close this. And now let's go back to the resource group and let's click on the Windows VM. And same deal, I'm going to do connect. Click the thing. So you want to click on the Windows VM. And you want to click connect via Bastion. And again, the username is sysadmin. And the password is from the one from Credential Secrets Manager. Right there, hit connect. Okay, after a few minutes, you will see that the RDP session started up. It brings up Server Manager, which says you are an admin. And so let's go do the other thing. Let's go and say, all right, let's bring up Microsoft Edge. And go through all this nonsense, continue. Continue on Google Data, just browsing. And you can see that it's connecting to Microsoft.com. So, um... I want one tutorial back. So if I open up a new tab here and go to God, what's what's not uh let's go to youtube.com. I don't want to bring up any news sites because the news is all bad. So here we go. This is um youtube.com and so that shows that the NAT gate we were is working. We have outbound internet access even though this is a private resource. So at this point, I can, um, you know, administer this box. I could go and do the control panel and install software, remove software. You know, we have a fully working RDP session within the browser via the Bastion host. So that's pretty much it for what we've done. We've created uh, a Bastion host. We've created a VM, private VMs, a Windows VM and a Linux VM. We've shown we can SSH via the Bastion host to the Linux VM, and then we can also RDP to the Windows VM with Bastion Host. So at this point, the only thing left to do is to be a, a good steward of your, your cloud accounts, and we need to go and we need to destroy the project. Destroy also takes about 10 to 15 minutes.